Good morning, guys. How are you? I hope everything goes well. Okay, let's see. For today's session, we're going to start working with our second mode. Right here, as you can see, uh, we were talking about before, like uh, some topics that you were doing, some activities. For today, we're going to focus on adverbs and intensifiers as well as tactics questions, okay? Be aware according to those two topics, you're going to see the information, like some examples, you can see the material, the studio that is right there in the platform, and then you're going to start working on that. And times fires, okay, according to it, like this grammar topic is focused on when you really want to focus on one action, right? For example, an adverb that makes the meaning of another word stronger, because you really want to say that something is extremely difficult, it's very interest, interesting, is really angry, or whatever verb, yeah? Adverb. So in this regards, we're going to see some examples right here. You're going to take into account that to start making your own sentences. Okay. Entonces tenemos intensificadores que hacen referencia a, que a aquellas palabras que quieren darle una connotación mucho más fuerte a alguna palabra. Por ejemplo, en español decimos que el problema está extremadamente difícil, que es un libro muy interesante, que ya está realmente furiosa, and so on, right? But in English, we're going to be aware according to what is the correct way to use the grammar for, as well as the coherence according to the sentence we're making. So, for the first one, for the first category, we have more intense, more powerful. So, for this category, we have the those three words, strongly, very, or really, right? The first example is, the problem is strongly difficult. Or you can say, this tax or this homework is strongly difficult. You're referring to how, how difficult it is, but you are making a stronger connotation according to this sentence. Recordemos que en la parte gramatical, entonces tenemos the problem, cuál es el sujeto, is verb to be, in this case, strongly the adverb and later the adjective, okay? This one is the correct way to make a sentence using an intensifier. So later on, we have very, it's, it is a very interesting book. As you are referring to this book, you are just saying that, oh yeah, there is very interesting that you really like to read it, that you really like to see uh, the books according to this author or well, whatever information you are talking to, right? Okay. Entonces, recordemos también, luego del is, en este caso como estamos hablando de algo singular, vamos a utilizar el a, it is a, but later on we have the intensifier. Interesting, which is the adjective, and later on book, which is the object. Okay. Really, she was really angry with me. As you are referring to this part, you are saying that like this uh, problem or this situation was or makes you makes you angry, makes you furious, makes you like bad mood, right? Okay. So remember like the order according to it, and then you can see this structure. In this part, as you can see right here, we don't have ease right, or are, because we are talking about an action that already happened, it means there is in simple paths. That's why we are changing these quotes. But the other part is the same, where it's in the same place, the intensifier, later in the adjective, and later like the complement. You can say that, for example, he was really happy with me when we went to the cinema, right? Or you can say other sentences, but just focus on the use of it. A strong, okay. This one is our second category. We have two different words, rather quiet. Let's see some examples. That some was rather difficult. The water is quite cold. Okay. Esas palabras tienen otros significados. Como intensificadores se refieren a algo puntual. Cuando nosotros decimos that some was rather difficult, Decimos que el examen fue más bien difícil, yeah? We are referring to this action rather difficult, rather easy, rather normal, yeah? You are referring to, like, for example, when you are taking a task, maybe you say, um, I, I don't know if I pass it or if 
I didn't. So that's why you're expressing that the sound was rather difficult. And the other sentence that you consider here is quiet. In this context, yeah, like an intensifier, like an adverb means bastante. El agua está bastante fría. Yeah, you are referring to like this water is too cold, it's quite cold. Yeah, all right. So, and finally, we have our third category, which is to a limited extent, pretty, pretty, and somewhat. Okay, those three examples. Let's read them. My brother is pretty tall. The film was pretty good. And we were somewhat tired. Okay, in those uh, examples, you can see right there that we are using the intensifier. Um, this category is la limited stand. So, my brother is fairly, is bastante alto, okay? The film was pretty good. La película fue bastante buena. And we were somewhat tired. Nosotros estábamos un poco cansados, right? So, in this regard, the order is going to be the same for each of them. Yeah, just that we change is the intensifier according to the connotation that we want to use on that. So don't remember those examples. You're going to be focused on them, like where is the correct grammar use on it. And remember that these intensifiers you can use with different tenses. So for example, you can talk about a sentence using present continuous, present perfect, simple past, and all of them, yeah, all of them are allowed to use. So right now we're going to see um, some pictures and according to them, the idea is that you think upon what is the, uh, maybe you can say what is the best intensifier that fits each sentence, okay? So she is, and you're going to see this picture. What advert you can use for this? Okay. She is, we can say she is extremely tired or she is really sleepy, yeah? But it depends on the action that you want to highlight or that you want to talk about. In the second picture, there are three girls and they are swimming. What we can say according to that? They are very happy, yeah? Um, say something according to the water. So you can say the water. We can say the water is rather warm, for example, or the water is quite warm. Okay. If you go, if you go to a Halan, yeah, you can say that this water is going to be one of the examples that. Uh, we really or we usually find okay the third one the third picture he is and um, but he's eating right yeah right there but what can you say what intensifier you can use for that sentence so he is extremely happy to eat this salad maybe he is very interested in eating, right, in eating tomatoes, for example. They are, uh, they are singing, of course, they are happy. They are amazed about singing. So if you want to use an intensifier, which one could you use? They are quite happy. They are quite excited or they are pretty excited. Right. He's, oh, he's writing, yes. Maybe we cannot say a lot of things according to this picture because we are not sure about what kind of emotions this person is feeling. However, we can deduce that something is happening right there. I can say that he's very tired about writing. Or I can say that he is very interesting or quite interesting about writing, right? It depends. And finally, she is. Things I have to understand. Okay, this one is the name of the book. Pay attention to it. And also, well, she has a computer. There are two glasses of 
maybe water, soda, there are books, there are different things, and she's listening to music. So where we can say according to that and according to her mood. Maybe we can say that she is quite interesting in reading. Okay. Maybe we can say that she, uh, like, this book is rather difficult or easy to read. It depends on the connotation that you really want to emphasize on. Okay. So this one there is going to be the explanation. Yes, according to this topic, don't forget the use of intensifiers, look at it and as many times as you require, but it's going to be very, uh, be very aware of, it's very important to take into account the use of it, yes? In which moments on the sentence, we are going to put the intensifier in, yeah? In what situations we can use. Okay, let's continue with the use of tag questions. Tag questions is a very common topic that we usually listen to when we're watching a movie, when we listen to a song, in, or when we're just talking or speaking with a person. Just the most important idea according to it is taking into account in which situations it is important to use tag questions and also how we can use them because there is a specific rule according to each verb tense. So let's see some examples and let's start. For the person verb to be, that is according to uh, your name is Pedro, yes, there is going to be the sentence is a need. Okay. Entonces, vamos a enfocarnos en este tipo de preguntas hace referencia a son, digamos que, la parte gramatical que nosotros utilizamos para corroborar una información que ya dijimos. Es decir, por ejemplo, your name is Pedro, tu nombre es Pedro, ¿cierto? Ese isn't it, ese don't you, didn't she, were you, haven't you, hadn't he, won't you, can't she, hace referencia a un cierto cuando nosotros lo utilizamos en español o seguro. ¿Bien? Estamos preguntando si... Lo que dijimos anteriormente es verdadero o es falso. Ese es el uso de las tag questions. We use them very frequently. Yes, we use them. Yeah. Or sometimes, for example, in Spanish, when we're talking, it's very common to use them. Or when we write, we're writing. If just if you just write an email, and if you want to confirm some information is true or false. So right here. Let's start verb tense, present verb to be. For this sentence, yeah, your name is Pedro. Estamos nos refiriendo a qué, al nombre de él, que se es Pedro. ¿Cómo hacemos referencia a ese nombre? Nos enfocamos en el is. Entonces, en este caso, como esta oración va en positiva, el tag question iría en negativo. Y si tenemos acá una oración que va en negativo, el tag question iría en forma positiva. Debemos de tener en cuenta el tiempo gramatical en el que está, si está en afirmativo, si está de forma afirmativa o negativa. Y, consecuentemente, quién es el objeto del cual se está hablando para incluirlo allí dentro del tag question. ¿Ok? The translation is not going to be in the literal way because I cannot say es eso or esto no es. No, it's just the translation into Spanish, you can just relate to, ¿cierto? Ah, tú estabas allí en la cafetería, ¿verdad? ¿Cierto? Ok. So, uh, isn't it. ¿Por qué isn't? Porque acá tenemos positivo, acá sería negativo. ¿Y por qué el it? Porque este hace referencia a Pedro. Right, que es el nombre, como es un nombre, lo hacemos la connotación con el it, right? That is going to be the correct way. No podemos decir isn't Pedro, no, because you are referring to his name, isn't it? All right. So the next one, sentence negative, right? She's never late on the third question. In this case, as you can see right here, we are not denying this sentence just with not. No, we are using a frequently over never. So, 
She's never late. Is she? Remember that this word is, is the first number of verb to be right there. The second example there is going to be with person simple. So for the tag question, we use don't you. Porque recordemos que en el presente simple, cuando nosotros estamos haciendo una pregunta, vamos a utilizar el do o el das, dependiendo del sujeto. En el caso del do, hacemos referencia al you, they, I, right, and we. And doesn't or does or is going to be for she, he, it, her first. In this case, in this report, you're going to say, you live downstairs, don't you? Okay. So, if you are referring that something positive here, you need something negative. Don't. Right here, the opposite. You don't live here, do you? Can you see the difference? Positive statement, negative that question. Negative statement, positive that question. All right. So, en este caso tenemos el don, ya lo tenemos allí. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos negando la información que está en presente simple. Negando este tipo de oración. Pero aquí solamente tenemos el verbo. Tenemos que mirar en qué tipo de tiempo está gramatical para saber a sí mismo cómo podemos transformarlo en una that question teniendo en cuenta el auxiliar que necesitemos. Ok, the third verb tense is past simple. She studied biology. Ok, as we know, studied or is the past simple of study, right? That's why we're, we know that the auxiliar when we're talking about past simple sentences is did. But as since this sentence is in positive, we're going to make this that question in negative. So, didn't she, which is the subject right here. Okay. In negative, we say, they didn't know. Did they? Ah, ellos no sabían. ¿Cierto? Ellas son biología. ¿Cierto? Yeah? All right. Let's continue. Pass continues. You were joking, weren't you? The main verb right here is word. As we have here in positive, this one there is going to be negative. And the subject. You weren't joking. Were you? Can you see the difference? All right. Present perfect. You've done this before, haven't you? All right. This have, which is here is a contraction. It means there is a shorter way to say have because you are just simplifying this. Mm, in this way that we have here positive, here we have negative, haven't. And this one, which is the same subject. Right there, we had like a, a similar example, but the difference is that we have here in negative. You haven't finished yet, have you? All right, right. Past perfect. When we have past perfect use, is because we we're referring to an action that hasn't finished yet. Yeah, that you are just doing, you are working on it. So, um, he had been in the word, which is present perfect, yeah. You've done this before, haven't you? You haven't finished yet, have you? As you can see right here, we have this have or have, or haven't. And hadn't and had, those are different because this word is in present, this word is in past, or is the perfect of those both tenses. He had been in the work, hadn't he? They had never been there, had they? Because never, it means that this part is negative. No necesariamente tenemos que tener el auxiliar negando como tal el verbo, sino que podemos tener never para saber que esa oración es negativo, por lo tanto tenemos que conformar el tag question de forma positiva o viceversa. Will you be okay? Want you? We want a right time. Will we? Okay, remember right here that when we use you, yes, it's referring to an action that is going to be referring to the future. 
you'll be okay. Oh, estarás bien, ¿cierto? What you want is the negative way to use will, is the contraction. But we can use as well, will not. There is the other possibility. And both of them are okay to use. We want a right of time. Will we? Like this tough question, it referring to a natural um, that you are just doubting, that you heard a question, you just really want to confer in the information is true or false. Mm, llegaremos tarde, ¿verdad? ¿O cierto? Okay. And finally, we have the modal verb, which is the use of can. There is one of the examples. But we have a lot of modal verbs, like should, like may, might, among others. This one is only just one example. So she can speak English. Can't she? Right? En este caso, vemos que el verb modal es can. Solamente vamos a ponerlo en forma negativa. Can't. Si tuviéramos acá should, acá sería shouldn't, may, may not, might, might not, on the subject, all right? And also, in negative, we have you shouldn't be here, as I mentioned before, this one. Tú no deberías estar acá, ¿cierto? Should you, you shouldn't be here, all right? This one is the correct structure. Guys, those are examples according to those questions. So, taking into account this explanation to make your own sentences and based on those uh, like different characteristics, you have to take it into account at the moment you really want to say or to write your sentences. Not only be focused on the tough question, yes, but also if it makes sense. Vamos a focarnos también si este tipo de tal cosas tienen coherencia con la afirmación anterior que nosotros mencionamos. Entonces recordemos que para cada una de ellas, la tal question, vamos a utilizar una oración ya sea positiva o afirmativa en diferentes tiempos gramaticales. Podemos utilizar el presente, el pasado, el presente perfecto, el futuro, verbos modales, entre otros. Pero a su vez, tenemos que colocar dicha oración completa para, a partir de allí, crear el tal question que tiene en cuenta el tiempo gramatical, el sujeto, y si la oración anterior era positiva o negativa para hacerlo de forma contraria. Okay? The first activity that you have to send it to me, it is this one. Good old times is the name of it. So, uh, this activity is going to be available since yesterday, April 3rd, until April 20th. All right? Don't remember the hour, 7.59 a.m. So, what is the idea according to that? You're going to use adverbs, intensifiers, and some questions to confirm that if were in and like some information is similar or is not according to the sentence you already said. So you're going to establish comparisons according to like the different relations or among different relations of some individuals in the past and into the present through like kind of comprehension exercise about the following out. Right here, audio track, you are going to listen to this audio and according to it, you are going to report, yeah, in like a, in a survey way. Entonces, van a utilizar a verbos intensificadores y preguntas de confirmación para establecer las comparaciones entre las relaciones de individuos en el pasado y el presente a través de un ejercicio de comprensión de escucha que vemos acá la página web a la que ustedes pueden acceder y posteriormente ustedes van a elaborar un reporte escrito en forma de cuestionario. ¿Sí? Esa como tal es la idea de la actividad. Instrucciones, the structures, the first step. Okay. When the student has finished reading their reference material, this person will listen to an audio track on which an elder person talks about the way he interacted with other people when he was younger and the customs resulting from these interactions. Entonces, una vez ustedes, como tal, finalicen 
la lectura del material de estudio que tienen allí en PDF como material complementario para que ustedes tengan más ejemplos de la explicación que se dio anteriormente de los TAC Questions. Entonces lo que van a hacer es que van a ir a este link, escuchan el audio que hace referencia a una persona de edad avanzada quien habla sobre cómo él interactuó con otras personas cuando era más joven y las costumbres que tenía y cómo resultaron dichas costumbres en la interacción que él mantuvo. Que una vez ya tengan eso, entonces ustedes van a proceder a escuchar. Eh, aquí tenemos de Google Surveys, ¿ya? Yeah? Like to listen to this audio y van a completar una encuesta. Lo que van a hacer es que van a realizar una encuesta de 10 preguntas localizadas en Google Surveys to make use of adverbs and intensifier latent information he or she collected in the listening exercise. Y van a escribir cuántas preguntas? 10. Entonces, esas tienen que incluir los adverbios intensificadores relacionando la información que ustedes encontraron allí en el ejercicio de escucha. Es decir, ustedes escuchan el audio, ok, then I comprehend what the person said before, and now I'm going to make 10 sentences using tag questions, but as well as adverbs, right? Or intensifiers, and when you have this information, you're going to go to the survey, Google service, you're going to use this link, to start making those questions, all right? What's what you have, you publish it, and then you send it to me. So, remember something pretty important that we are going to be focused on, the information sheet. So we have to use these tag questions para confirmar información a través de un ejercicio de comprobación de contenidos de un audio en un foro, right? que es la actividad número dos. The idea is that you are going to report information on the firm comparing the main aspects of the human relationships today and in the past by using and answering that questions. Okay, Entonces, la idea acá está la segunda actividad. Ustedes van a utilizar también las preguntas TAC, de TAC questions a través de un ejercicio de comprobación de contenidos de un audio. La idea es que reporten la información que encontraron allí en el foro, comparando los aspectos principales de las clases de relaciones que tenían los humanos anteriormente y creen dichas preguntas. Entonces, en la primera parte de la actividad, crean cinco oraciones, entre oraciones afirmativas y positivas, con, digamos que las respectivas preguntas relacionadas acá en el foro, Yeah, where she did, where he did in the listening comprehension report from the previous activity. Y luego en la segunda parte, ustedes deben de responder esas cinco preguntas del de compañero que lo publicó en el foro, colocando solamente la, la forma corta de la respuesta. Es decir, you are, ok, but this information is in past. So you were a very good player, a very good soccer player. And the third question sería, weren't you, right? La persona que va a responder puede decir, oh, yes, you were, oh, no, you weren't. Yeah, it depends on the audio. So, entonces tienen que hacer todo el proceso para que puedan hacer estas dos actividades y cumplirlas en el tiempo que se requiere. Entonces, por favor, para que miren las fechas que tienen allí y lo pueden entregar a tiempo, ¿ok? That is all for today. There are only two members for this video class. I really hope that you just watch it and if you have any questions, just let me know or just try to send them on time, yeah? There is the requirement for these two activities, ¿ok? So have a great day and we talk later.